reminders these of once popular method along the border of keeping the Scot at home. Many a Highland candidate has been elevated, if not exalted, here. Here's what the Romans did to keep at home the early Picts and the later Scots. Many a war has ended by this Roman wall, but many another battle has begun here. Think of it, 10,000 battles begun here. But the smithy will tell you that according to the law, you must live 21 days in Scotland before even he can make the anvil ring. So tack her under your paper, laddie, and bide a wee. Here in this wonderful land amid such scenes as this, Robert Burns wrote his immortal song. Kings and courtiers rise and fall, this world has money torn. But brightly beams appear to them all, the sparrow rabbit born. Why is it called the Grey Mare's Tail? 200 feet is pretty long for a tail. The waters of Scotland are not only beautiful, they are useful. Sooner or later, the water finds its mill wheel. Sorry we can't show you the miller's daughter. He's a bachelor. Let's see where we are now. Here border raiders used to hide the cattle they stole, and dissenters praised God in their own way. One rebel captive got away by rolling down. A spot with a drop much, in fact. Named Edwin, Edwin Burra. But if Kingy Blank, the first found, the start he gave Edinburgh when he moved in with his wife, Twenty dance and thirty daughters. The legend assists that King Arthur also founded Edinburgh and rested on that distant peak still called Arthur Street. This is called the Royal Mile, for once it was just that. From its castle impregnable on the rock to the Royal Palace of Holyrood, where Mary, Queen of Scots, took on in hasty marriage Bothwell, husband number three and got many a scolding from John Knox, who didn't like her style, or the stories she heard about her milk baths, or where they wine baths in this secluded bathhouse. Hard and grim was John Knox, the reformer who lived here, and preached at St. Giles under the crown of stone, and found at last in Parliament Square his resting place. Advocates close. Here echoes the hope that someday the Scots again will have their parliament. Two hundred years ago, these were the highest buildings in Europe. 
Then the rich moved out and the poor moved in. The higher you go, the lower the rent. Time was when Riddle's Close was a shuddery place, where a blood-mad murderer, Major Weir, shocked the world with his crimes. Pleasanter memories here, in Waldrop's Close, where once the immortal bones lodged. And overall stands the castle, a grim and royal fortress, for a thousand years. Yonder on the King's Bastion is the ancient gun, Mons Meg, named after the maker's wife on account of the size and eloquence of Meg's mouth. The devil's elbow sometimes twitched if royalty demanded a funeral. The Argyle Battery commemorates a righteous man who waited here to be taken to the block. But in the grass market below, Religion was imparted to stubborn scotch heads by a singularly simple method of removing them. Scotland's tribute to her valiant dead in the Great War, built upon the pinnacle of the Castle Rock. Inside, set in solid stone, a bronze casket with the rolls of the dead. 100,000 names. Below the castle, in the middle distance in Princes Street, a monument to a hero who wrote of heroes, Sir Walter Scott. On Carlton Hill, a monument to Nelson, victor of Trafalgar. Mariners on the fourth watch for the fall of the time ball. Simultaneously, from Half Moon Battery, a gun bangs the news when it is one o'clock. Time for us to be on our journey. One way of leaving Edinburgh, if you have the price of a ticket, one of the world's greatest engineering feats, the Forth of Forth Bridge. Each span more than 1,700 feet long. The bridge must be painted every third year. And it takes three years to paint it. So it isn't just a job these painters have, it's a career. <laughs> <laughs> 